Hello everyone and welcome back to Zaklit Educational Channel. So in this video, we are going to discuss the previous year's important questions which came in the UGC Net Environmental Science paper and this is going to be very very helpful in the upcoming examination. So if you haven't watched the first part of this 2023 March examination for Environmental Science paper, you can watch the link given in the i button as well as in the description below. So get ready with your note to note down all these important points. Let's start today's video. So I request you to keep your mobile in the landscape mode in order to view this question easily. So here the first question is how many national missions from the core of the National Action Plan on Climate Change that is NAPCC to focus on promoting understanding of climate change, adaptation and mitigation, energy efficiency and natural resource conservation. So it is asking that how many core national missions are there under the NAPCC program. 6, 8, 10, 12 are the options and here the correct option is option number 2, 8. There are 8 plans or missions under the National Action Plan on Climate Change. It is one of the very frequently asked questions in the examination. So let's move to the next slide to know more about this and to learn a trick to remember all these plans. So there are 8 important goals under this NAPCC plan and these are number 1 sustainable agriculture. So the mission is for planning under for sustaining agriculture. Next is national action plan for green India. The third is national action plan for energy efficiency, national action plan for sustainable habitat, national action plan for water mission, national mission for sustaining the Himalayan ecosystem and national mission for strategic knowledge for climate change and national mission for solar mission. So these are the eight missions under the NAPCC. But the questions used to come that which is not a NAPCC plan and which is a NAPCC plan. So we are most often confused between sustainable development goals and NAPCC plans. So I will show you a trick and let you know that what is the main important fact you should know and how to learn all these 8 plans. So our trick will be found in this slide. So the trick is you should remember all the initial alphabets in the plans. For example, for national solar mission you should remember S. For energy efficiency you should remember E. For habitat planning, it will be H, sustainable habitat. For national water plan, you should remember W. For agriculture, that will be A. Similarly, for green India, G. And Himalayan habitat, it will be H. Finally, for national action plan, for strategic knowledge on climate change will be C. So from here, we will get one thing that is Sehwag HC. So you should remember that Sehwag was a high class player. And Sehwag made India win many matches. So Sehwag will help India to win and fight against the climate change. So this is quite simple to remember if you are remembering only one thing that is Sehwag, a high cast player. Let me remind you about the mock test series going on for the solid revision for the UGC net examination. So this is about the three mock tests for paper two and one mock test for the UGC net paper one with answer kit will be provided. It is simply rupees 129 rupees. So let me remind you it has to be paid on 88950 number and you have to just share the screenshot of the payment through the Zaclit account or email ID given here and you will get all the mock test link and appear as per your convenience time. So the next question is who led the work of Tarun Bharat Sangh? So which made water available round the year in the wells. So this may be new for some of you Tarun Bharat Sang. It is not Singh. So Tarun Bharat Sang, according to that who led the work will know everything in deep. Just we should know first the answer of this question. So here Rajendra Singh is the person who led this Tarun Bharat Sang. So here it was made for the water availability. So you should know overview of this organization. So here I have mentioned you should note down. Tarun Bharat Sangh which is also called as TBS, it is a non-profitable environmental NGO. So it is an NGO founded in the year 1975. So these highlighted points you should note down with its headquarter in Alwar, Rajasthan. So it is situated in Rajasthan and Rajendra Singh has been the chairman of TBS Did Sangh since 1985. So till now he is the chairman of TBS that is Tarun Bharat Sangh and TBS started their work for water management through construction of Johards, Anicuts and buns for the rainwater harvesting. So these questions can be asked. They make Johads, Anicuts and buns for the rainwater harvesting through the water management program in order to store and conserve the water through rainwater harvesting program. So this is the overview of the Tarun Bharat Sang. Let's move to the next question. Next question is which of the following is related to Marrakesh Accords? So this thing is also 
maybe for some of you it will be for the first time they will be listening to this thing that is Marrakesh records so Marrakesh records is related to the Kyoto protocol of 1997 how we'll know so the Marrakesh records or accords is a set of agreements reached at the seventh conference of party that means COP7 in which this agreements was formed that is Marrakesh accords to the UNFCC that is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change held in 2001 so it was held in 2001 seventh COP conference in Morocco yes so it was actually held in Marrakesh city which is located in Morocco on the rules of meeting the targets set out in the Kyoto Protocol so the targets which are set out in the Kyoto Protocol that agreement was again formed in the seventh conference of parties that is called as Marrakesh Accords I hope you have noted down all these things let's move on to the next question next question is in coastal marine estuaries so here I will highlight this question in coastal marine estuaries and bays eutrophication is linked to harmful algal blooms causing widespread fatalities in the marine organism this phenomenon is called what so due to eutrophication in the coastal marine estuaries algal bloom they spread and they cause the death of the marine organism and this phenomena is called as red tides so it is also one of the frequent last question red tides is the phenomena and who are responsible the organism which are specifically responsible for the red tides are dinoflagellates they are having two flagella so they are dinoflagellates you should note down this thing coming to the next question next question is from the what it's from the toxicology syllabus so here we will read the question determining the concentration of aflatoxin in peanut butter so in peanut butter aflatoxin is present and calculating the dose an average person would receive is referred to as what kind of experiment or assessment so here the thing is the experiment which we are going to do is to find the concentration of the aflatoxin in the peanut butter and calculate the dose of an average person who would receive so this is known as exposure assessment so your exposure assessment is the you should assess how much a person is exposed to a certain toxin in order of determining its toxicity so this is called as exposure assessment let's move to the next set of question next question is from the most important thing that is a concept for this thing is required if you don't know you cannot answer this question the question was which of the following are the standard or average sea level pressure so they are given in different units yes sea level pressure in different units and they are asking which are the correct standard average sea level pressure so it is given in nm square psi inch and in mh2o kilopascal so these things are the unit different units of the pressure and you have to tell which are the correct value for the standard average sea level pressure so i will tell you i will not take much time here so here 101325 newton per meter square that is correct 14.69595 psi is also correct 29.9216 inch mercury it is also correct 10.33227 mh2 is also correct but this thing 1013.25 kilopascal is wrong it will be 101.325 kilopascal so which is the average sea level pressure in kilopascal 101.325 it is not 1013.25 so here a b c d they are giving the correct standard average sea level pressure so here which option will be correct option number two will be correct a b c and d only are correct coming to the next set of question next set of question also it is one of the very very important thing you should know it is from the different chemical reaction in the photochemical smog and ozone concentration also so we'll read the correct statement we have to find out we'll read one by one volatile organic compounds nox that is oxides of nitrogen and sunlight are essential for photochemical smog it is absolutely a correct statement photochemical smog is predominantly formed during the summer season yes it is correct so next thing is nitrogen dioxide dissociates by sunlight at 300 to 400 nanometer it is yes correct statement molecular oxygen dissociate by sunlight and provide atomic o that is one single oxygen for the ozone formation it is correct but here it is mentioned in the troposphere it is incorrect so it will be in the stratosphere this thing happens where the oxygen o2 it splits and one oxygen 
atom it joins with other oxygen molecule to form ozone so this sunlight is the main reason for breaking of this oxygen molecule and it happens in stratosphere not in troposphere so here i'll clear all this thing so here d will be not a correct statement a b c are correct till now next let's read the e statement tropospheric ozone concentration is maximum at noon on a given day yes it is correct tropospheric ozone concentration is maximum during the noon time so a b c e are the correct statement where is the option yes here are the options you should know a b c e only are the correct statement so here d is not correct and we know why because it is in stratosphere coming to the next question next is what next is actually the match the following yes this is from the evolution so we will match one by one no need to get confused sympatric special means the process of differentiation and acquiring reproductive isolation within the same geographical area so where in one area where differentiation process takes place and acquire reproductive isolation it is called a sympatric kind of speciation coming to the next thing that is the parapatric speciation so parapatric speciation where it takes place it takes place it is the process of speciation which occurs between adjacent population within a broadly continuous habitat so adjacent population having a broadly continuous habitat there the kind of speciation is called as parapatric speciation next is adaptive radiation adaptive radiation whenever i am telling you must be thinking about darwin finches yes darwin finches are the best example of adaptive radiation because what because it is a type of it is a process by which organism adapt to the change environmental condition to form new species in the relatively short period so because of adaptive radiation only we got different species from one single species of the darwin finch so here it will be the c will match with one next is allopatric speciation so allopatric speciation it happens when the population evolves in the different geographical regions due to isolation so it happens in the different geographical location due to isolation where the population they evolve into different species that is allopatric speciation so i hope you are able to understand these things note down all these things they are very very important coming to the next set of questions next is from the elemental analysis the question are on your screen so i will read this thing here question asks the elemental analysis in environmental sample can be performed using what so it is asking specifically for the element level of analysis so how we can find which element is present in what environmental sample it can be performed it can be analyzed during the analysis of uv visible spectrophotometer it is not uu it is uv visible spectrophotometer yes we can do the analysis in elemental level aas technique atomic absorption spectroscopy we can do icpos also we can do x ray fluorescence we can also do elemental analysis xrd we cannot yes we can't do elemental level analysis in the x ray diffraction technique so here a b c d will be the correct option where we can do the elemental level of analysis i will tell you why xrd we can't do and what is xrd so here option number 4 will be correct a b c and d only are correct for the elemental analysis x ray diffraction or xrd is a non destructive technique so this also is asked very frequently non destructive technique x ray diffraction technique that provides detailed information about the crystallographic structure so it gives the physical properties and chemical composition of a material mostly the crystallographic structure of the material which we are going to analyze that is x ray diffraction technique these things are very very important things you should note down let's move to the next question next question here is what next question is choose the correct statement so we'll read one by one and i'll tell you which are the correct statement so this is regarding the water treatment and its disinfection so here first is temperature has effect in disinfection treatment of water yes temperature has a very important effect in the disinfection for the water ph controls the amount of hocl and ocl in water absolutely correct chlorine gas is used for disinfection forms hydrochloric acid as a product in water yes it is also correct disinfection action is because of hocl formed and not due to chlorine gas it is also correct disinfection happens due to the formation of hocl because it binds with the water molecule where the toxins are present and not due to the chlorine gas next is combined chlorine exist in water due to combination of hocl and ammonia and organic compounds yes 
combined chlorine exists because of the reaction between the HOCl, ammonia and organic compounds. So A, B, C, D, E all are the correct statement related to the water treatment and disinfection. So option number 3 will be correct that is A, B, C and D are all correct statement. Let's move to the next question. Next question again from the ozone and UV radiation. So I am repeatedly saying that ozone is very very important thing which you should know and I have prepared a separate video related to the ozone thing all the chemical also you should see that video I will provide in the i button. Let's choose the correct statement. So here what happens is choose the correct statement UVC breaks down oxygen molecule in the stratosphere. Yes it is correct. A 1% decrease in the overhead ozone in the stratosphere results in 2% increase in UVB intensity at the ground level. Yes, it is also correct. UVA is biologically the least harmful, it is correct statement. UVB helps in ozone dissociation in the stratosphere region, it is also correct statement. So A, B, C, D are correct till now and Chapman mechanism deals with both ozone formation and destruction in the stratosphere region of our atmosphere. So A, B, C, D, E all are the correct statement. So option 3 will be correct. So these things should note down. Let's move to the next question. Next question is metals used in the wood preservatives are what? So in wood preservatives to in order to keep the wood for longer period of time to avoid from the attack from the pest and insects which metals we use? We use copper, we use arsenic, and we use chromium. So A, B, D are the correct thing. You should not read what are incorrect because it will be in our mind. And which option will be correct? Option number 2. A, B and D are the correct metals which are used in the wood preservatives. Let's move on to the next question. Next question from the ecosystem thing. The question is the biotic structure of the ecosystem is characterized by the composition of the biologic community including what? So the biological community includes and what are the things which includes which forms the biotic structure of the ecosystem. So species number, biomass, life form, life history and spatial distribution. All these things are very important in order to characterize the composition for the biotic structure of the ecosystem. So here all the options will be correct so option 4 will be correct so i hope you have learned something new from this video don't forget to subscribe the channel exactly to get further updates and prepare efficiently for the examination all the very best for the preparation see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself